Alright. Okay, so this is the debate for Frotch versus Groves. We're going to um, just do our predictions now. Chris, what's your prediction for this fight? Um, Far Frotch by a KO inside six. <laughs> KO inside six. Joker? Yeah, man, I gotta go with Carl Frotch. Um, I just think he has uh, too much experience, uh, too much advantages in this fight. So I'm picking Frotch by late stoppage. Frotch late stoppage. Errol, what do you reckon? Your prediction? Carl, Carl Frotch by a majority decision. Tom? I'm gonna go for uh, a Groves win uh, on points. Mm, mine is, I'm uh, gonna say, Groves by points as well. We'll get into the rest in a bit. Don't worry, guys. Uh, the next question I've got to ask you guys is, you've all seen the um, the build-up. Has Carl Frotch lost the mental battle in this fight? Chris, what do you reckon? Uh, no, he hasn't lost the mental battle, but he's lost battle at mouth. I mean, he's been, he's been talked fucking dead. Do you know what I mean? He's made a bit of an um, embarrassment of him gross, but I don't think Frotch is... He's too experienced to lose battles like that, do you know what I mean? His experience of pulling through. George Groves has been here before with Gobble Jim to go, so I'm not really surprised Groves has gone this route, which is his only chance for me. Mm -hmm. Joker, what do you reckon? Do you reckon he's lost the mental battle? Well, I think that's something that we're going to have to wait until the actual fight to actually find out, because I think in history we've seen guys um, who are trash talkers be able to like belittle their opponents before a fight, but then at the same time we've seen guys do that and then it backfires and you motivate a guy to uh, to actually wake up for a fight that he might have been sleeping for. So, you know, Carl Frost might have been taking George Groves for granted and with all the trash talking, now he really wants to whoop him now. So uh, it all depends. I think we're just going to have to wait and see um, until the fight. But as it appears, you know, I think George Groves looks like he's winning right now. Mm -hmm. Errol, what do you reckon, mate? Do you reckon he's lost the medal battle? Um, I don't think so. The reason why I say that is that um, Darrell has really got a big mouth. And um, in the build-up to that, he was doing similar to what George Groves was doing. And to be honest with you, Carl likes that. That's what motivates him. Because to be honest with you, he didn't want to, he didn't want to defend his belts against George Groves anyway. He kind of liked him. And all this stuff he's getting is fueling him and motivating him to make him want to beat George Groves even more. Um, like, I mean, you can't really tell with Carl Frotch. I mean, he's coming across like he is because he's not really saying anything back. George Groves is, is obviously saying more, but to be honest with you, he's too experienced and too thin. I'd have to say, no, nah, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. Tom, what do you reckon? Do you reckon Frotch has lost the mental battle? I don't think he has lost a mental battle, but I will be honest, it was really, really funny almost seeing Carl Frotch cry on ringside. <laughs> it was, it was brilliant. Yeah. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go against you all. I'm going to say he has lost a mental battle. I think right now he's so angry at George Groves for making him look stupid. Because that's what he did do, he made him look stupid. He's going to go into this fight and probably abandon his game plan just to try and knock Groves out. And that could... That could you know, go right into Groves' tactics. And if that happens, it could be a good fight. Next question, Chris. Do you think this should be a pay-per-view fight? Uh, no chance. Absolutely no chance whatsoever. I said before Kessel fight that they were brewing this fight up. It were an obvious step forward. And in principle, I like the fight. But George Groves has fought nobody. He's fought a bunch of fucking ghosts to beat James Gale. That's his best win. Yeah, the guy's got a number one ranking at Man for Challenge, but it's an absolute joke. It's never seen pay per view. It's not even a main event fight, really. Mm -hmm. Joker Boxing, do you think this is a pay per view fight? Um, I mean, it probably isn't. Most people will say it's not, but I mean, for me, I think Carl Frost has kind of paid his dues in the sport, so uh, I don't mind it. You know, I'm not. It's not something I'm going to get pissed about. I'm not paying for it, so <laughs> I don't mind it, man. Uh, I got no problem with it. That's just me. Yeah, I mean, you don't have to. You don't have to pay for it. Errol, do you think this is a pay per view fight? Yeah, I do. The reason why I think it's a pay per view fight, you got to look at look at the belt. The belts are on the line. Carl's established himself as being the best fighter in England. He's gone about the hard ways or the hard road. And I think he needs to he, I think he look he, he needs the pay like um he deserves the um, he deserves the recognition. It's two world belts, you don't obviously get that. Alright now if George Groves wins then he becomes a pay per view star and there's big fights for him. Carl Frotch is gonna be he's supposed to be marketed in America and this is the whole thing, you need to put him as a pay per view star to get him that money, to get him that exposure, to show that he's a, he's a serious champion, not someone underneath the radar. And I think, yeah, he deserves the money and the whole occasion itself 
deserves it. I mean, it bigs up the whole profile of English boxing. If it was just, just like a, a normal fight, like no one would get it up. Now people are talking about it. When it first was announced, I was like, nah, whatever. But now the build up and everything's going into it, I think, yeah, it's going to be. And obviously, the fight of the night is going to definitely prove that it was a pay per view fight. And I think they deserve it. I think both of them deserve it. George Groves might be exposed, but Carl Fox can go on for that. And, you know, he's getting straight to America if he wins. So I think, yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Tom, I've got two questions for you because what? basically you're doing one thing that everyone else is not doing. You're going right. to the fight. So, I firstly, am, yeah. right, you, I reckon you paid around 100 quid for your ticket. Do you yes. reckon you've been paid, you've been ripped off? Um, based on what I was told, well, on what was uh, what was brewing to start with for the, for the sort of the undercard, I didn't know. Uh, I bought it on, under the impression that I was going to see a few decent fights. As the time's gone by, uh, it's, it feels a little bit like that. But it's not really anyone's fault. Uh, I suppose, though, with McDonald and Smith, uh, they're fighting on it now, but they weren't going to. Uh, so it's good to see them. But they're fighting no marks. So there's, it's 50 50, really. Yes and no. Uh, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm excited to go to see all the, you know, all the fighters. But I'm not at the same time because I'm just going to see all the fighters fighting fucking Argentinian road sweepers. Mm hmm. Yeah, the next question obviously is the same one the rest of that. Is this a pay per view fight that you pay for? Um, if you can get Lucian Butte over to England, into Nottingham, uh, on Sky Sports 1, then no, not at all. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. That, that's it, really. If you can, if you can afford to get, to get the, the Canadian unbeaten man, uh, the, the most avoided man at super middleweight, even Andre Ward would want to fight him, right? If you can get him over to England, to fight for his title, you you can afford to pay George Groves twenty quid and a bag of chips or whatever it costs to, to hire him. Mm -hmm. Without pay per view, yeah. Without pay per view, obviously, yes. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I mean, my 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 thoughts on this is this is not a pay per view fight unless Groves wins. Now, if Froch wins, all it is is a shit on the card, right? With you know. Fight, is fighting nobodies, like I said, and Froch wins, and he's a one to five on, you know, one to five on shot. So he's supposed to win. It's supposed to, it's one sided. You're buying this fight, you know, you're paying for this to see Froch, not as much as he Groves to see Froch. So if Groves was to win, I would say it's a huge upset and well worth the money spent if you support him. But if you, if not, you know, I, I, I can see how other people will be annoyed by it. But moving on from that. This is going to be a hard question for you guys. Come on, Chris, you've got to be honest now. Is Carl Froch slightly overrated? Now, I'm not saying is he shit. I'm saying is he overrated. Do people put him on a pedestal much higher than he really is? Go, Chris. Uh, that's that. They do, sure. No doubt about it. People say how many times he's fought world champions, one times on trot, or how many times he's been in world title fights on trot. But watch them fights. They look bad against Pascal. They were losing against Taylor. He looked like he lost against Durrell, he lost against Kessler, he beat a shit Abraham, he looked shit against Johnson, then he lost against Ward, then he went and beat Lucian Boutet, guy who's got chin issues. We knew that before they even fought, so I good his record now. <laughs> You've ripped it apart, Chris. Alright, Joker, what do you think? Is he slightly overrated? Now, we're not saying he's shit, I'm saying, is he overrated? Okay, I'm going to say that he's slightly overrated, but I'm also going to say that he's slightly underrated. Um, because, I mean, before he even fought Lucien Boutte, a guy who I think is extremely overrated, before he fought Lucien Boutte, I already thought he had a great resume, man. Um, I mean, here's a guy who I think has proved that he's the second best guy um, at super middleweight, and the argument is out there that his resume um, could potentially be better than Andre Ward's, if, if obviously you take away the fact that Andre Ward beat him, which I mean that cements Ward's uh, resume. But Carl Froch has a great resume, man. He's fought everybody. He's never really ran from anybody. Um, so I think he's kind of underrated. I think a lot of people don't really talk about him as much as they should. Um, but then in a sense, I guess you could say maybe his technical skills might be a little bit overrated. But as far as his resume, man, I think it speaks for itself. That's just my opinion. Okay, Errol, same question. I don't think so. I don't think so at all. You gotta look at this, yeah? Most of the fights he's took and, and, and the road he's took, starting from J Jermaine Taylor, if I can remember, he was supposed to lose all them fights. 
every one of them fights he was supposed to lose and he came through and, and, and it was a spectacular fight. The most entertaining fight. I guarantee that if you sit back like in like maybe, I don't know, 10 years maybe, and you could watch one of them fights, them fights were boring, exciting fights. You know what I mean? Thrillers and he came through and he's knocked down, being knocked down, come back to Jane Taylor, knocked him out. Abrahams, you know he's a banger, dangerous guy. You know he was because he knocked out Jermaine Taylor. Yeah, not the beat him, beat Glenn Johnson. Yeah, he boot a. We didn't know about boot a. Boot he was looking, t he was looking like a beast in Canada, knocking everyone out. Carl got him over here. Carl, that was supposed to be Carl's like, you know, see, see you later, Carl. And look what he did to boot a. I didn't know about boot a. Beat the crap out of him. All right, maybe you can go with uh, Yusef Mack and some of the opponents recently. Yeah, but then, uh, then look at the he went against Ward. Now look who Wood's got on to be like number one pound for pound. Like I don't think so at all. I think he deserved everything, and I think he deserved the payday. I think the British fans deserve to put him put him there. I mean, who else? Who else? Who, who else? Of the resume, he's got a tighter resume than that. He's right now. He's all, he's right now. In my opinion, this is just my opinion. He's near, he's, he's he's his first ballot Hall of Famer right now already. Just right now, as it stands right now, against George Groves, yeah, against George Groves, all he's going to solidify him as as. as as being one of the best, best, best up there with Kawasaki and everything's there, and then he's going to go on to the cement his records. I, I listen, he's well worth it. So, I think no. Okay, Tom. The same question to you: Is Carl Froch slightly overrated? I'm not saying he's shit. Do people put him on a pedestal that he's just not on? Uh, at the moment, it seems he seems to be when he was with Hennessy, right? No one cared about him, and he was brilliant. As soon as he moved to Eddie Hearn and he started getting in the in the forefront of uh, of the, the the news, everyone he turned into sort of wanker and everyone started massively overrating him, saying that everything that he'd done was brilliant. Uh, now, if you if you actually like like Errol said, if you look at his the people that he's fought and the, the long run of people that he fought, it is brilliant. But since he's moved to Eddie Hearn, he's had he's had like uh, was it Butte? And then a really soft touch in Mac, and then he's fought a faded Kessler, like a, a, an awful Kessler, um, and now he's fighting George Groves. So, no, I wouldn't say he's overrated at all, but he's just a knobhead now. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, we might come back to that later. He's changed into a dickhead. Well, do you ever we'll come back to that? Oh, yeah. We'll come, back, we'll, we'll, we'll come back. We'll come back. We'll come back. We'll come back. European. Before yeah. you before you make your uh, your statement, let me ask you a question. Going off of that, all right. Um, who do you think, as far as all UK fighters are concerned, you would say has a better resume in their own respective divisions than Carl Frost, man? Because I think he, out of all of the UK fighters, has probably the tightest resume. Kelbrook. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, definitely not. Definitely not Kev Bro. Yeah, so I would say he probably has the tightest resume. And if you're going to criticize, if you guys are going to criticize the fight that his second fight with Kessler, then what do you think of Andre Ward versus Edwin Rodriguez? You know what I mean? Like, I, I think that there's nothing wrong. There was nothing wrong with the second Kessler fight at all. I, I honestly thought that uh, Ed, you know Gracia beat uh, beat Lucien Boutte when I watched them fight. So I think. Uh, Edwin Edwin Rodriguez knocking out Gracia in was it one round? Yeah, one round. Yeah, yeah. I think that that gives him the right to fight Andre Ward, and I think it makes him a legitimate challenger for him uh, because of what he's done. Mm -hmm. Okay. He also won that little yeah that was the little mini tournament, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. um, yeah couple of fighters, you know, four fighters weren't there. He beat he beat someone and then he knocked out Gracia in one round. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what, what I think what, that's what making that, him a decent challenge. What was that question again? You basically said, "What was that again?" I was basically asking you, "Who do you think who's got a better resume than Carl Frosch?" Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, basically, I don't think many people do. You know, honestly, I don't think many people do. I, I guess you could say Lennox Lewis did. I guess you could, but that's that's a different class. It's a, you know, active. He's talking about active, right? He's active fighters, yeah. I don't. I'm not, no British fighters have got a better British age, fighters. Man. Yeah, yeah. I don't think there are. Uh, another, another thing as well, I'd like to add here that the I'll Smith, make a card. There you go. Yeah. I, I, um. Just to just to, to let Tom know, this, the Smith's not fighting on the undercard of the. He is not. No, he is. He's, he's, he's injured. No, no, no. no. I've London this had a Callum, Callum Smith has been put, has pulled out, but okay. Stephen Smith oh, is. Stephen Smith fights oh, right. him. Okay, all right, okay. Thanks for that. Yeah, so. Don't worry, I'll, I'll uh, <laughs> I think Amir Khan has got a better uh, 
you know, a better CV than Cal Frotch. He's got, a, yeah, but he's been, all right. <laughs> yeah, he's been beaten, he's been beaten, yeah. but yeah, overall, he's fought, he's fought far superior fighters to Cal Frotch. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, all, right, all right, but let's look at, all right. the, the point that I was just trying to quickly make, guys, was that um, if you could only name, you know, one guy, maybe, potentially, who you say has a better resume, then you can't really truly say that the guy is overrated. I mean, I think he's, for the most part, proven his stake in, in the sport of boxing. And like EJ said, I think he's pretty much done it the tough way. He's had to go the hard right. He was underdogs in a lot of those fights. Every one of them. No, he was not underdog in every single one of them fights. No, no, no. No, no, no. Well, no I'll, I'll address that. I'll address that in my next fight, in my in my comment about, about, about him being slightly overrated. I would say he's slightly overrated because one he did struggle with the opponents in the Super 6 he was not I, I bet on these fights he was not the underdog in a lot of these fights he was the favourite against Andre Durrell who probably beat him let's not get that wrong he probably beat him he was the favourite against against um, Jermaine Taylor who didn't beat him but he knocked, he, he knocked Taylor out you know he was definitely the underdog against um, Arthur Abraham and Mikel Kessler Right, and he and he only won one of them two fights. He was the favourite against um, Glenn Johnson. I know that because I bet on it. I believe that one. That's the only one. I, 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 you, that was I'm not. That was not. And, and yeah, that. and the other one. The other one. Um, he was. I bet, I bet on that fight. He, I swear down. He was the favourite in that fight. He was. But he, he on his resume. What did he improve to do to to, to make him? Um, it don't matter. You know, Jermaine Taylor was Jermaine past it. Yeah, but Jermaine, Jermaine Taylor, Taylor was past it. He was, He had stamina so, issues. The only thing, yeah, it was a big punch. Yeah, but it was a it was a former undisputed midweight. Champion, what he called yeah, former, former. What, 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 what was um, what was what was James Tony, former freeweight, <laughs> former freeweight champion. What's he today? Losing in prize fighter. Yeah, but moving on. And now we're gonna move on. We're gonna move on from that question. Okay, I would say he's slightly over. I'm not saying he's shit. I'm saying he's definitely a great fighter. I'm saying he's just not the greatest fighter in the world. Right, moving on. George Groves is he overrated or underrated, Chris? Uh, but there's not even a question to this. Is so far overrated. It's ridiculous. Who's he ever beaten? How's he beaten anybody to get the ranking he's got? This no. is all being paid for, signed, sealed, and delivered. I'm telling you. Called it over a year ago. It was so obvious. It's, it's unbelievable. Mhm. Mhm. Joker boxing. George Groves overrated or underrated? George Groves, man. Um. I don't know. I think this is another thing that we're going to have to find out in this fight because what information do we really have to go off of? Of um, if, if, he, if he competes against Carl Frost, everyone's going to say he was underrated. If he goes in there and gets obliterated, they might say he was overrated. Um, but as it stands right now, I just don't think we really know, man. I can't, I can't answer that one. I think that... Uh, I think that we just got to give credit to the guy who comes out and does what they need to do. I think we just got to give him credit. Mhm. Mhm. Okay. Errol. No, I think I think personally, yeah, he's um he's underrated. He's underrated. Oh. I think he's underrated. In my opinion, yeah, like with George Cruz, he's got the he hasn't, he hasn't like bought his way to the shot. He's got the shot directly by working his way up, beating the guys. Who? Who's he beating in the top ten to be ranked number one? He's not ranked number one. Is, I thought it was he's not ranked is, number one. I didn't say he's that. He's ranked. No, nah, he's not. He's ranked top three with both organizations. Yeah, what happened, nah, what happened is that some of his opponents, yeah, I, I didn't interrupt you when you was talking, but it doesn't matter anyway. Yeah, all it is is that some of the guys that were supposed to fight Carl Frotcher, they couldn't fight him, so they moved it down, and George Trump was the next guy in line. Right? What I'm saying is that he's earned his way up. He's earned his way up. You know, he's beat he's beat people like Glenn Johnson, right? And uh, listen, in the day he was, in the day like Papa said to you, I don't know the rest of the opponents, but he's earned his way up. But he's earned his way up. I think he's ranked number fifth or sixth, but he's ranked in every body, every san- for sanctioning body. So he's a, he's a known guy. People in America they talk about him as well. I, I think personally, he, I, I don't think so. I don't think so at all. I think he's deserved his shot. We're gonna find out if he's if he's gonna do it. And now if he does, he makes his name. If he doesn't, then boy, he could then you we can criticize him on on his performance. But for now, he's undefeated. He's got a shot, and we we find out. So I think no. Okay. Okay. Tom. Uh, he's he's not really baited at all. I mean, he's he's a good fighter. He can punch really hard, but. Um, this is this is the test that he's he's going to you know that he needs and if he if he wins then brilliant if not then people will say he's overrated but he just he, he isn't really rated he's beaten James De Gale, who's a good fighter uh, he knocked out Francisco Sierra who was um, 
limited, but he was, you know, he was tough, um, and that's about the limit of his um, of his achievements, I think. Mm-hmm. So he's, he, to me, he's not really rated at all. It's just a, a decent fighter who's got a got a shot against a world champion. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. With my with my opinion, basically, I think he's underrated because everyone's already counted them out to this fight. You, whenever you count these guys out of this fight, they're dangerous. They're too dangerous to count out. You know, it's, we've got to wait until fight night, but. You know, I think Groves is underrated, but we'll move on from that. We'll move on. Okay, here's the fa- uh, this will be Tom's favourite question. <laughs> Has Carl Froch become a prick? <laughs> oh, God. Right, Chris, go. <laughs> yeah, well, I used to be a big fan of George, but, uh, sorry, Carl Froch was totally far, Andre Ward. I, I don't know why he'd be able to do that afterwards. He got put in his place, completely embarrassed, and he's just run his mouth ever since. Been living up with other guys there. I think ever since he beat Boote, they made him out to be something. Boote had initials. How anyone can say that Boote were the real deal? They did not watch him against Andrade. This guy had a big accident waiting to happen. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, he, he runs his mouth. He's an absolute cock now. I don't know why he's gone like that, but that's what he is. <laughs> Joker Boxing has Carl Frosch become a prick. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know. In some ways, I mean, the guy's a little bit cocky. You know what I mean? But I think all these fighters, when, when you're risking your life, you're doing this, you're going to have a little bit of cockiness to you. Um, he's not doing, a, you know, an Adrian Broner type of thing where, you know, he's going to war with Paulie Malignaggi and then after that he's bragging like, you know, he just knocked somebody out. So he, I, I think that he, he's earned his stake in the sport of boxing. You know what I mean? So... These guys who are at the top, Andre Ward, Mayweather, Frost, man, if, if they're going to be a little bit cocky, you know, it is what it is. They, they've earned it. So I don't think he's going to make too crazy. But, I mean, you guys would know better. Y'all are in the UK, so y'all would know better than me, you know. <laughs> Errol, this will be fun. Errol, do you think, do you think Carl Frotch has become a bit of a prick? <laughs> I, th- I think he's been arrogant. I won't call him a prick. I'll call, I'll call him arrogant. He's been arrogant for a long, for a long, long time. He's always been arrogant. He's been arrogant when he was, when he was calling out um, Joe Calzaghe. No, you're disrespecting him. And then you, every, most of the opponents, if you hear him in, in, in any time um, he's talking about any opponents, he completely dismisses them. It's just that George Groves is better in him. He's always been, if you, if, if, you know, some, yeah, arrogant prick, whatever. He's always been like that. It's, it's just that, you know, maybe he was winning and people didn't see that. Now, he lost, when he lost against Andre Ward, you're like, yeah, yeah, now he's just annoying that. I, I can see, I can see why people would call him that. But I, I, I'll be honest with you, he's always been like that. He's, um, he's just had that arrogance about him, and that's what he needs to get him to get him. It's like, he, like Joker says, it's a dangerous sport, and you, you need some sort of edge. And I guess that you know, he's not like a Price. Price is a, you know, well-mannered guy. He's, that's what Frotch needs to to get him up and to make him make him who he is now. So I, I think, no, nah, I don't, I don't think so. I think he's just always been. I call it arrogance. I wouldn't call it a prick. Okay, okay, Tom. What do you think? Uh, He's always been a prick, but since he's moved to the match room, he's become like literally unsufferable. So just to watch him makes me annoyed. Um, like when he speaks, uh, I'm a pay-per-view fighter. I'm a consummate professional. I'm a warrior. I am a legend in this sport. I am a true hall of fame. Just fuck off. He's such a cock. I hope. He's, oh. <laughs> Do you know what? It really, really boils my piss, and I want Groves to smash him in about ten seconds. It would make my night. I would fucking laugh my tits off. I'd walk over to Eddie and I'd piss on his shoes. <laughs> okay, Tom. <laughs> I knew that was going to be a good question for you. He, he, he's, he's, he, he was always a dickhead, right? He was always dead arrogant, and he was always an asshole. But since he's moved, he's, his head's just inflated. So now, because he's on Sky. Uh, and because he fought on pay-per-view against Kessler, he thinks he's an absolute megastar. Uh, and, and like, if I ask someone in the street who Carl Frotch is, they'd say, Did, didn't he do that gardening program ten years ago? <laughs> yeah, well, my 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 thing about that is, you know, he's. I think he's always been like that. This has always been him. Basically, people have just not been aware of it because, before, you know, pre bootay he wasn't, you know, really shown on TV that much. Now he's shown on TV on almost every opportunity. And now people are like, oh, he's a prick. And I'm like, yeah, but he was always like that. That's what it is for me. Moving on. So, um, this is for the one people, you know, the Carl Frost pom-pom guys, okay? Is Groves chinny? 
People waving their pom poms. Chris? It is chinny. Is, is Groves chinny? Well, he's because got Carl Frotch keeps saying it. He's got him with a 16 ounce whooping spiring, so these are 10 ounce because they're going to be wearing, so he's got question marks over his chin. Kenny Hansen dropped him. Mm -hmm. So the guy's got chinny shoes, I know they're big punches, but they're George and feel that Carl Frotch is not. A massive, massive bunch. Just because he took Jermaine Taylor out. Jermaine Taylor out on his feet. The guy gassed well before that. Mm -hmm. He took another guy out, Lucian Boote. Lucian Boote would chin it. Andrade showed us he would chin it. So was he knocked out with a good chin? I don't think he's knocked too many people out who've got brilliant chins, but... Um, oh. Yeah, I don't think he has, but I think he's a decent puncher. Uh, Joker, would you say grows his chinny? Um, you know, where I'm at is like what I said before. I think that people are going to make their assessment of George Groves based on this fight. You know, I think that if he comes out here, he gives a, a, a makes a good account for himself against Carl Frost. They're going to want to see more of him. You know, he, he's, he's a great fighter. Everyone's going to be talking really great, nice about him. And if he comes out here and Frost just mops the floor with him, then all of a sudden he's overrated, he's overhyped. That's what people are going to do. So we're just going to have to wait and see. I think he's going to have to justify um, where he's at based on this fight. You know what I mean? I think that if he's if he is a talented fighter, he should at least show himself well in this fight. If this is really easy work for Carl Frost, then he, he just didn't belong on this level to begin with. Mm -hmm. Adol, what would you say? I'd say like I'd say him. I'd say let me. I'm gonna compare them because they're they're both fighting. Like George Groves has been flawed, yeah, but he's obviously got heart. He's got up and you know won the fight. Carl Frost has been flawed as well. So in my opinion, they're about the same. Their chin's probably about the same, which is. Well, you can't really tell. I mean, they take the hardest punches of the people in the division, Abraham and, and other people. Jermaine Taylor kicks pretty hard, and some of the others. I think, um, in my opinion, right now, I think, um, I think, no, I don't think so. I think, I honestly think they probably probably got about chin, but if they've got such good defense and, and good hearts and stuff, big hearts and that, so you don't really been tested. So I say, no, I don't think so. Okay, Tom, what do you say? Um, he's Grove Chili. Yeah. Uh, I would say probably yes, but he, he was down against Anderson, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. um, so I think he's been down once in his, you know, in his professional career. But like you know, Chris said before, um, Groves got put down with 16 ounce gloves on in sparring. Cal Froch got knocked out by Tony Bellew in sparring. Um, so if we're going off that, then Froch must be chinny as well. And Froch has got like the best chin in the world. Um, I think Groves can't take as well of a put like as, as a punch as well as Carl Froch. Uh, he got he got dropped by Anderson. Carl Froch got dropped by Jermaine Taylor, but that was like a peach of a shot that he didn't see coming. Uh, the one that Anderson dropped him with was just like flush on like in the face while he was looking straight at him. So mm -hmm. I think that's a little bit more of a worry than. Uh, than Approaches. I think yes, but he has taken a few shots since and not looked so bad. Yeah, I think so. I wouldn't say that it grows his chinny, just for the fact that every single time that there's a person who people want to see lose, they bring up, oh, he's been dropped before, he's chinny. That's what happens, and now they want to see Groves lose, so they're saying, oh, he's chinny. Right, that's what happens. If you look at a lot of the, you know, the liked fighters, the, the hyped fighters, the, the named fighters, look, look at people like Juan Manuel Marquez, look at Lamont Peterson, both of them get dropped pretty much every single fight they're in. They're not chinny. But they get dropped. They get. I mean, Lamont Peterson, for example, has been dropped more times than Amir Khan. Yeah, Amir Khan's chinny. You see what I'm saying? I mean, it it all depends on who's fighting. I wouldn't say Groves is chinny. We'll move on. Is Carl Froch the ultimate warrior, Chris? Is he the ultimate warrior? Um, it's style it's length with, you know what I mean? It stands there, it was. But you've got to look, you have to look at him losing against the Rell. They won't look too worrying, that's why I would have. Mm. This whole worry has been come about when he fought Jermaine Taylor. He had his ass booked in that fight. And he got looked yeah, at. Jermaine Taylor did what he always did, he gassed. Then they had to fight with Netflix. Just stood there, punching each other. He fought Abraham. Abraham can't defend himself. Glenn Johnson ran over, man. So when it's tough, you know, when they're boxer fighting, he's not a warrior then, is he? He's a warrior when someone wants to war with him. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Joker, is Carl Fox the ultimate warrior? 
You know, you know what I mean? I gotta say, I'm really used to uh, to being the villain, man. You're really making me be the nice guy today. <laughs> but uh, I tell you what, man. For me, I think that the guy, I think he is a warrior. Um, I think that, uh, you know, anybody who really steps between the ropes, you know, you're risking your life. You gotta give him that respect. And I think that he's proven that he does have a warrior instinct because when the chips are down and when he's in bad situations, he can dig deep, okay? And a lot of guys, um, guys who are on the talent level, of like a George Groves, you know, we don't know how much of a warrior they are until they're under, you know, stress and they're in those type of positions where they get knocked down and, and you know, they're down on the, on the scorecards. And this guy's done it all, man. So I think he, he is a warrior in the sport, and uh, I think he's um, he's earned his stripes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Errol, what do you think? I think the name the Open Warrior is, is, is really, it's like, it's, I, don't even, I don't know why they could use that in boxing, but if they're going to go by it, and that's probably concocted by Eddie Hearn probably, but um, he's on a tough road, and he's he's, he, he, he's a gritty, gritty, tough fighter, and like, he, he could probably mix it, maybe, I don't know, maybe in the 60s and the 50s with some of, them, some, of them, some of them tough guys in there, I think he's a tough guy, I wouldn't call him an Open Warrior, right, but I believe that he's a tough guy, and he's got a big heart, and you know, he's proven himself against some of the... Like the road he took, some of the fighters wouldn't have took that road. I mean, he beat und- unbeated, undefeated Pascal, you know what I mean? And, and some of them guys there, so, like, I wouldn't call him over warrior, but I, I believe he's a tough guy, so i just say that, leave it as that, man. Mm-hmm. Tom, what do you think, pal? Um, well, if he's the ultimate warrior. Yeah. When did he last come to the ring wearing, like, pink, pink boots and, uh, like, feathery wings? <laughs> tassels and stuff, yeah. Yeah, tassels <laughs> and, and face paint. I can't remember that, mate. Um, I, th- I wouldn't go that far. No. He's, he's a good, he's a good fighter, but ultimate warrior is a bit, a bit strong. Like, uh, like Carol said, it sounds like some of Eddie Earns come up with. I mean, no. <laughs> no yeah. Not the ultimate, no. He's, uh, he's, he's pretty good, though. Yeah, I wouldn't exactly call him the ultimate warrior myself. I mean, you know, he's got a great resume. He's not talking about literally every comer in the world and stuff. And people still don't know if it was him or Andre Ward who didn't fancy getting on in the UK. So we've got to say that. And also the Adonis Stevenson fight, that didn't come off, did it really? I mean, Adonis so Stevenson's which. Terrible moment. Adonis Stevenson? He's, he's awful. Oh, we'll see. We'll see when Bellew fights him. He, uh, he, 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 he will get knocked out by Tony Bellew. <laughs> <laughs> he will get knocked out by Tony Bellew. He's shit. We will see. Absolutely <laughs> terrible. Okay, okay. We'll last see. question. Last question, last question, last question. There you go. If Groves, yeah? If Groves wins 7 out of 12 rounds, will he win the fight? Chris. <laughs> Chris. The fight won't, fight won't go that far, so it will make no difference. It'll be all over inside six, but for argument's sake, you can't argue, because there's no chance that Proctor will get robbed. Or there's no chance that Proctor will lose a close decision, there's just no chance. Mm hmm. Uh, okay. Um, Joker Boxing, if Groves wins seven out of the 12 rounds, clearly, will he win the fight? Um, I don't know. It's hard to say. I mean, a lot of people uh, would, would think that, um, you know, maybe. Rose might get robbed and Frost might get the nod, but look at the Timothy Bradley versus Pacquiao. You know, a lot of people had Pacquiao win in that fight, and you would have thought that, if anything, Aaron would have been protecting Pacquiao, but somehow Timothy Bradley came up with it. So you never know what the mind is behind, you know, the people who are pulling the strings behind these, these shows. But um, I'm going to say this. If Rose somehow was to win in some people's eyes, he's going to win doing it on the back foot. He's going to be boxing. When you're fighting a guy like Carl Frosch, who's a pressure fighter who's coming forward, you know that's going to uh, you know, tip the scale in his favor in the eyes of these judges. We already know these judges aren't good at scoring fights at this point. So um, I think it's going to be very tough for Groves, man. It's going to be real a tough battle for him. Mm-hmm. Uh, Errol, what do you think? If Groves was to win seven rounds, would he win the fight? Yeah. Well, it depends. You're going against the old <laughs> slash... <laughs> Oh, my warrior, whatever, against Carl Frost. So even if Carl Frost is down, like, I trust Carl Frost to pull it on him. Carl, remember, Carl is the champion, and um, he's the more established, biggest champion. Yeah, Carl, Carl could pull it out, but you know, in in the boxing lines and the, the box, it depends on how he won them seven rounds. Did he did he completely outbox Carl Frost to make Carl Frost look stupid? Like, well, yeah, in argument's sake, yeah, he did. He, he won them clearly. All right, you see, if he won them. Yeah, yeah, well, we, yeah, I think he yeah, and if, if, if he doesn't. The, the public demand, like with the burn, they be demanding a rematch. So it's you know it's just one of the things because we're not you know social media we're not going to let it rest. If it, if it happens that he gets well, we feel like Carl Frost gets a decision because 
he just get decisioned and um nah man nah man i think george george i don't think he get robbed i don't think so nah i don't think so okay so we're gonna we're gonna oh. we're gonna end all i have to say is eddie loves a draw <laughs> I think that's all that we need to say. So, come on, we'll give our predictions again, just to just to call it with. I'm going to say George Groves wins a decision. Chris, who are you saying wins? Yeah, I'll we'll just walk through him. Start off with a jab, work his way through, knock out within six. Knock out within that's six. Knock out within six. jabs. Oh, we might do. Yeah, joke of boxing. Who are you going to fight to? I'm going Carl Frost by late stoppage. I just think he has too much, man. He's on another level. He's seen fighters like George Groves. George Groves hasn't seen fighters like him. And uh, like I said before, man, we don't know how George Groves would have done against half of the guys that Carl Frost has has fought, man. I think uh, Frost wins by late stoppage. Okay, Errol, what are you saying? Same thing I said from the start, man. Carl Frost, majority decision. Okay. Uh, Tom? I still think Groves will win on points. That's it then. Thanks for listening, guys. Tell us what you think. Tell us if you think we're talking a bunch of shit. I'm sure you will. Thanks, guys, for listening. See you later.